So, sorry, I was caught a bit early. So I can talk for 10 weeks. So how, how long can I talk now? 20 minutes on the dot? Excellent. Let's see if my clicker works. Oh dear. First slide. Ah, thank you. Oh, that's second actually. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, so thank you for this uh, final talk, coming to this final talk. Uh, 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 so, uh, I'm uh, uh, leading the lab uh, at Delft University on, a, uh, on uh, all blockchain and trust uh, issues. So, together with eight professors, we're uh, running the largest lab on the its kind uh, in, uh, in Europe. So, our input is currently 960 bachelor students in computer science, and our output is currently 7070 masters of blockchain per year. Uh, so, we, uh, we, we have... Uh, 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 one year of academic level, of master level, uh, blockchain education. Uh, so that's uh, things like distributed algorithms, uh, blockchain engineering, all these, uh, and uh, consensus algorithm, all these, uh, uh, these things. Uh, so if you want to download uh, these slides and other stuff, this is the Twitter handle. We just did a, a new release of our software. I'm going to talk about our new token economy. Um, so what we'll be talking about today is uh, that we have something which is special. We see a lot of things about ICOs and, and creating money without banks. The next uh, thing for us scientists is that we can produce trust with software. I'll, I'll be sharing uh, my experience. So I'm a grandpa in the blockchain. I've been doing this sort of trust building and building tokens, what we now call tokens, for 18 years, uh, that we create trustworthy software. So this is one of the longest running uh, examples, and it's been a bit in the, in the, in the back burner, a bit of silent. We cannot really cut through the noise that some people would, uh, uh, marketing people. So we have, we have zero marketing people. We are a 100% engineer or scientist uh, uh, team. So eight professors and quite some students in the lab. And it's just BitTorrent. It's a BitTorrent client on steroids. Um, and it uh, includes a distributed accounting system where you can have bandwidth as a currency. I'm going to explain the details all in the coming slides. All of this uh, can be uh, documented. Uh, so my first academic paper ever, open information pool. So this was a few years uh, before Wikipedia started. We had an academic operational platform. Uh, so I co-founded uh, uh, this with uh, uh, some real programmers that uh, we had the first uh, encyclopedia of music where everybody could edit. This was, and you needed to create some sort of form of trust. And this somewhat worked uh, 18 years ago, and then we switched to Tribler, and I've been improving this ever since. So here, these are not white papers, these are academic proceedings. And this all is about trust. You see that, that the history of trust has changed a bit. As we first started to do gossiping in 1995 on a mailing list on who was trustworthy, and who was not, who was a good seller, and who could not be trusted. There was a, a interesting things that was Craigslist. This is how, instead of calling people or building personal Rolodex, and then we had a website, and we had patents on this, and that's called eBay, and now you had a few wines and a few beers, and you get into the car of a total stranger, and he drives you someplace, and this transaction has been established after loose contact on the internet, and the middleman who established this transaction, they refuse to take any responsibility. Have you heard of this example? Is it profitable, Uber? Does it sometimes even work? That's the remarkable thing. Then we had Mount Gox. How did that turn out? That's one of the biggest bank heists in history. Then 2017, we made a, a system where you could connect uh, Ebon accounts, so, but uh, more on that later. So before Christmas, we'll have a, a, a distributed trust design, a reusable mechanism for creating trust. So this is, a, uh, as, as we are getting more people in our ecosystem, so we now have 1.8 million people installing our software. So 1.8 million people, and then we want to do a bit more uh, applications. So, the, interesting. The model we're creating here is uh, based on the MIT uh, model from 2001. How do you create trust? This is what scientists have been uh, working on for, uh, for decades. So it's a very simple model. You have a reputation. This is a personalized perception, uh, how trustworthy somebody is based on certain information. Then you have a subjective expectation of trust, how we'll behave in the future, and then 
you do an action, and maybe it will be wrong, maybe it will be right. And so it can increase reputation, and you have some trust. And so this is called what we're doing, the self-reinforcing trust model. So as long as you can identify the magic people who are good, you just need this algorithm to define good and evil. It's slightly trivial, maybe not. As long as you're as, as long as you can do that in software. And uh, oh yeah, and, and if you can do lifelong punishment, that would also be helpful. So we have more on that uh, uh, later. So this is extremely difficult. This is the fundamentals. If you can do a reputation function across multiple domains, then you have it. So uh, that's our big thing. Um, we launched this in 2007. Then uh, it was, uh, so I'm a bit of a grandpa in the blockchain. Uh, so this was distributed uh, accounting system. There's only 20 scientists in the world then who were operating in this field. And um, we called it uh, file shares, forced to play fair, uh, banned with like a currency. Nobody cared. 2007. It had, you couldn't blow bubbles with it. There was no speculation in it. Nobody cared. Um, how did it work? It was uh, moving beyond the tit-for-tat paradigm in uh, BitTorrent. Eh? BitTorrent has 200 million users, so uh, uh, they do various things online. So you could just see who was, uh, who was a person who gave a lot to the community and who took back. Uh, this is contributing to communities uh, and giving back. This is the foundations of various Nobel Prizes, uh, the Game Theory Nobel, the Satisficing Nobel Prize, and of course the Ol uh, Elf Olsten uh, Nobel Prize. We have never cracked this problem. And now, Everybody just uh, uh, tells each other's opinion, and then it works somewhat. This is 2007 technology. It's not very good, but it worked at the time. You have a ledger. This is our notation. Alice and Charlie have a transaction, TX, and you just gossip around it, about it. How many bytes have you uploaded? How many bytes have you received? There's no compromise to scalability. Everybody just gossips around. This is 1995 Craigslist for computers. It will scale. It has no bounds to scalability. But everybody's free to lie, and you don't need some Byzantine full tolerance uh, things or, or imitation of that. You just need to know who's lying and who's not, the magical function. So this solves the free riding problem. So this was a, a, a primitive uh, pre-Bitcoin uh, ledger. Uh, so the, the details of this, uh, the Harvard, uh, my university, and Berkeley uh, did a nice write-up. Nobody cares. Nobody cites this work. Uh, but it worked. Uh, th th that was the interesting thing. Oh, yeah, we didn't call it blockchain then. We call it work accounting mechanism. That doesn't sound very sexy, does it? No. How does uh, it work in a bit more detail? So you don't need global consensus, but you, you just know about transactions. Alice knows about transactions, these TX blocks with well-known identifiers. You just gossip about it. Everybody has a partial worldview, and Bob also has a partial worldview. It just knows a few transactions of people it deals with and, and might re-counter. Then we do the magic of, uh, of uh, anti-entropy distributed uh, uh, database, uh, the 1987 uh, paper, ancient technology. So. They exchange their knowledge. And then it's sent one way, and then they merge their worldview, and they see that the graph overlaps. And so this is, uh, this is very simple. So this is uh, now what we now know as the DAG uh, uh, things, so direct acyclic graph uh, uh, things. So you see that when you talk to people and you, you gossip these transactions, your worldview is more complete. You can also be spammed, of course, because everybody is free to lie. And it even worked in 2007. But you couldn't speculate with it. It was just a BitTorrent bandwidth uh, system, or a token for BitTorrent, as, as, as we now call, uh, or people call this sort of stuff. Uh, so 2012, uh, uh, further improvements uh, to this. Uh, a and B as a, a, a transaction. So there's no, um, no prevention on double spending. But you don't need confirmation times. If you double spend, your reputation will be ruined in seconds. This is a totally different uh, paradigm. There's no puzzles involved. So forget everything you know about blockchains. This is more primitive and faster. You just need a multi-party agreement system. 
all other coins are based on mono signatures. Yeah, so Bitcoin and Ethereum, you just sign something with your private key, and then it's a valid it's part of a valid block, right? This isn't. You need multi-party agreement to form a, a valid block because a transaction, yeah, so one of the primitives of the key foundations of databases, that is uh, what we take. So we don't have a native token. We just have any binary blob. You can put that in a transaction. And you sign that with your private key. It becomes irrefutable. There is no confirmation time. You do not need to give 70% uh, of your mining power to some country in the distance. It's just the simple stuff. This might actually work for real world businesses. You don't need a mind frame. Um, then you do um, a bit of additions to this elegant model, and then it becomes all a bit more complex. So you fixate the temporal dimension, you put uh, uh, something happened before, and something happened after, and you call that hashing. Uh, everybody, and now we call that extreme sharding, uh, so that you have a, everybody just creates their own blockchain. Uh, you linearize all your transactions, and um, that's it. Very simple model. It works very fast. Then you want concurrency, so now, okay, this becomes even more uh, difficult. What you now do, instead of your own Genesis block, you just put your own blocks on your thing when they're signed, and you have various multi-party outstanding uh, requests, and you put that uh, on, on the counterparty and your thing when they're signed. Is that understandable? The slides are aligned uh, for the details. Um, oh yeah, and you also lose the message delivery now, uh, because you can have concurrency, so you can have eventual message delivery. Uh, so. It's agreed. Everybody puts transactions they agree to on their own chain. Because they signed it with a private key, they can no longer deny it. The emergent uh, effect, which you have in normal business processing, uh, if you have transactions, you have for usually fast, mix fast mixing graph uh, property. Look at Alice on top there. Alice has their own chain. And then she has contact with various parties. And they form a block. There is no blocks or mining or thing. No, it's just her own transaction. She can publish it to whoever she wants. He's fully autonomous. Very different than a normal blockchain, right? And so here is the ITF uh, write-up of this, uh, of this uh, thing. Oh, yeah, you, everybody wants uh, Byzantine full tolerance and all that sort of stuff. So we just put on some students to get that working. Um, so yeah, if you do, do use some um, a cluster on top of it, uh, so that's uh, the, the, the final layer uh, where you cannot do any forking because you signed it with your private key. And then occasionally, there's, uh, every few seconds, there's a checkpointing running. It's like, you need to tell us what your state is. And if you don't put your state uh, just compressed to 20 bytes in the common pot, or you change it and you cannot show the missing pieces, people don't trust you that much. So this is, again, not puzzle-based, but this is trust-based. So this is quite different than all the other. So this all works uh, uh, very well. This got accepted to the, was it the IEEE blockchain uh, uh, conference 2018. Um, I showed you the 2007 slides. This is how it looks today. A BitTorrent client with a bandwidth token and integrated decentralized market and all that stuff. Oh yeah, and also a decentralized voting system. So this is all very strange. It's sort of a YouTube without any website. It's academically pure. No server is involved. So you can do voting for channel, all decentralized. You can do, uh, uh, you can find uh, decentralized. You gossip around what interesting BitTorrent swarms you found. Uh, there's relevance ranking involved, BM25 algorithms, all open source, of course, in GitHub. You can see it up there. We're one of the good guys. I'm paid by the state until March 2042. Huh? So we're socialists here. This is not ICO funded. This is just government funded. Then students uh, did a nice trust visualization on that. So you just see instead of tit for tat, who's giving you bandwidth and who's not. And then you see who you're interacting with. Uh, just to make it a bit more spicy, so instead of just downloading BitTorrent, uh, we uh, implemented, uh, we have the second implementation of the Tor uh, wire protocol uh, without any of the central servers, like the discovery servers and, and all these things. Um, so we have our own network. Huh? So the Tor network is very mature and hardcore security. Uh, so we did a full Python implementation of that, and they didn't like it so much. We're wire compatible, but a lot of 
there are high level things uh, like that Tor has two, two congestion control uh, loops in it. So we should uh, in time should be uh, um, 10 times faster uh, than uh, them. And uh, they are, uh, have less than a thousand exit nodes for their entire 12 years that their network is live. Um, and we'll have some interesting things for exit node. We have bots as exit nodes. Anyways, so a bit more inclined with tokens and Tor, uh, Tor level security. Okay, that's already a bit of a mind step. And then we also integrate it, because if you download a lot and you use a lot of proxies, then your counter goes down, you spend a lot of these bandwidth tokens, you just go to the integrated decentral market. You, you, you just give it um, your wallet uh, um, for Bitcoins or Ethereum, and you just, you just buy or sell some more tokens. So this has a fully integrated decentral market. They have a full dedicated PhD student to get this secure and... Uh, Sort of works. Um, yeah, as a university, we try to scare people and be relevant to society. Uh, so we created the most scary thing ever, uh, which is uh, some, some cryptocurrencies have um, crypto kittens, uh, these cute things which multiply and things. We have the Terminator. So it's a, um, a self replicating software which uh, uh, owns money. And it owns money, which the university or no normal human controls anymore. So it's money under full control of a robot. Uh, and that robot has uh, very primitive genetic evolution uh, uh, algorithms. So we're building sort of a, a robot economy where, and we're socialist, where there's no profit-driven entities controlling the AI. It's all people who inherently are good and get paid no matter what control the AI. Maybe that's a better model, we, we don't know. So we specifically make this <coughs> stuff very scary. Uh, and we also work with uh, ethic professors to see how this should be dealt with, that there's hum uh, meaningful human control in the loop. Um, so this, um, these things um, uh, can buy some servers, huh? there's VPS and VPNs, you can just buy that with Bitcoins. And then you just buy another one month subscription. And uh, so this has taken us three generations of thesis students. So something like we sacrificed for science something like 15 uh, uh, students uh, to get this working over the various years. There you see the details. Um, and if you encounter a CAPTCHA, what do you do? You just enslave some humans and pay them if they solve the CAPTCHA for you. God, I didn't believe the students had that working, but really. Really, they have it working. Um, so what you do is say, uh, oh, I have an animation. Thank you for that. Um, it works. So we uh, created this toolkit for uh, robots on the internet. Uh, that's called Clodomate. So that's also really an official PyPy package. Can't believe they accepted our pull request. Um, so you just have something that multiplies on the internet, and it sends out Twitter uh, tweets that it's alive uh, sometimes. And then you have an exit node, and you just drive VP, uh, uh, VPS. And just because you, you want some protection when you're running a, a Tor exit node, and you're trying to make some money with privacy, it's, it's good to, uh, to, do, to also automatically buy a VPN. Have you heard of this stuff before? Anything operational like this? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, but this is all fun. This is, sadly, this is my hobby, the hobby projects of the students. This is how, uh, from our uh, 70 engineers of the blockchain we educate uh, each year, um, we also need grants because we run on subsidies, so we also need to do serious stuff. So this is the Dutch passport. This is actually an official duplicate of the state passport, which uh, has a chip in it, and it's one of the more advanced passports in the world. This does not have a normal chip in it. This has an elliptic curve cryptography-based chip in it. So fancy. And uh, so please crash this network. This is the trust chain I talk about. Please go to Android and try to install this, uh, uh, this app. And let's see if it actually works. This is a phone-to-phone -phone network. There is no server involved. Eh? So if you start up this Android app, your IP number will be revealed to me and others. You can even spam me with unicorns, as my students have done uh, when they're uh, uh, do doing this uh, uh, in the class. So it connects to other phones, and it does not traverse all these things. You can send PNGs to people. You can send uh, PDFs to people. You can put signatures in some form of it. You can scan the Dutch passport. It can interact with that. 
and you create the technical stuff. Ah, some people have found it. If you really know what you're doing, you find the hidden feature where you can do stress testing of the network. You can spam everybody here with running 50 clients on a single device. It will slow down. So this is also for embedded uh, devices. Right, we're nearing the end of the talk. We've seen a lot of um, identity, and that's one of the... Welcome, Melvin. Um, one of the things uh, has, has been, been building trust and building ledgers uh, over the past uh, uh, decades. It needs some legal certainty. If you want to have a sort of a Panama uh, uh, company, if you want to only operate in the, in the gray uh, zone, if you want to do anti-money laundering compliance, if you want to do K KYC, know your customer, you need to have some legal uh, entities. If you want to trade on various uh, exchanges, you need to leave your passport. If you want that or not, that's fine. But if you want to have a healthy uh, 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 blockchain or not, you can, you can have the Tor things, and we try to combine everything. So we combine Tor, and we turn, combine it with a valid identity of the state. So this is citizen number 14. And this is actually the person in charge, the chief architect of the Dutch uh, uh, digital electronic identity. Uh, so we're working uh, uh, with these people and they fund our, our research that we're trying to be the first country to have a significant economic activity uh, uh, on the blockchain. So we now see that uh, the, uh, uh, a large portion of our economic activity goes through the internet. This country wants to be, yeah, we have our biggest port in Europe and we have a big airport, uh, airplane hub. We want to be the first where there's meaningful economic activity. The majority goes through some trusted information flow. We don't know what it is. It might be called something like a blockchain. It, move, it may take us 10, 20 years. But we have actual trust on the internet. And we have transacts. So this is our ITF details. Thanks to my ghostwriter, Dan, who does all this stuff uh, in the weekend. Uh, and, and you can see the level of detail that we're now at for these uh, uh, legal compliance. I still have five minutes. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, right. Wow, this was already my last slide. Okay, so um, there you can see that the European Commission, they like that sort of stuff. Um, we, we, we try to pretend uh, that we're sort of one happy uh, big uh, continent and that we have uniform rules and things. So if we would have a European standard for trusted identity and trusted electronic business transaction and uh, a sort of a reputation you can rely on, um, they like that. They gave in lots of subsidies for that over the years. Uh, so the European Commission ha is helping us uh, quite a lot, uh, both publicly, as you can see uh, with that, uh, this URL, and also behind the scenes. Um, my final slide already. To conclude, so we, we've been uh, trying for uh, eight. This is, this is me without the receding hairline, by the way. Uh, when we're still young and naive. Um, it will take probably another five or ten years uh, before we have any meaningful trust and, and this magical public key infrastructure that we can actually build trust and trustworthy things that scale. We don't need mainframes in control or we don't need some sort of ICO and utility token. Who owns the internet? The same answer is who will own the blockchain? Probably. Yeah, we need a self-organizing and a self-governance uh, layer for the, uh, uh, for, for the next uh, layer. Uh, th 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 there cannot be some guys with or girls with commit rights on the global internet trust layer, right? We already have these monopolies called DNS. Look what that happened. Uh, so what we do uh, in the lab is uh, running code, real applications. My students never get their PhD or their master thesis if they do not have running code. This is a bit of a, a bit of a thing. So that usually means that when they graduate, they actually have running code. Um, yeah, you can read the details in our propaganda on our, uh, our Twitter handle. We, we actually tweeted 50 times now in our history of our project. And uh, if you want to know how uh, bankers and, and um, uh, Chamber of Commerce, land registration agency, our vision and our running code for uh, putting this country, this kingdom, uh, to be the first on some sort of public utility thing, this is our journal article on uh, the running code and our architecture for making this happen. So thank you very much. <laughs>